Welcome! So today we are continuing our Battle Dragon Clay Sculpture. Well, I should say my first dragon or actually clay sculpture ever, ever, you know? And so it's quite a big one to start out with, but it gives us a lot of surface area, you know, to, to do good things or to make a lot of mistakes on. So this is as far as I got. And those of you that have been on Discord have probably seen, you know, the first mishap that we've already run into. But before we talk about the mishap, saying hey to everyone who's joined, of course, Dave Beck is here already posting uh, dragon uh, emojis and things because he is like pumped. He is like, oh yeah, bring on the fire. So yes, we're gonna do a lot of that, you know, either in a good or, or a bad way. So let me show you kind of what happened. So before we had this thing perched on its PVC pipe, it was gonna be ready to go. I was gonna bake it in the grill and then we were going to transfer this whole thing to the real PVC pipe wizard tower. Well, it didn't quite work that way because I kind of should have done something ahead of time. And it starts with a letter M and it's something I don't do much. And it's called measuring. Yes, I should have gone out to the grill and measured if the whole thing even fit. And it turns out the PVC pipe is about this height. And no matter how you place that dragon, you just can't close that lid. So then I thought, well, no problem. I'll just cook them, you know, out like this with the lid open and we can create a little tent and everything. But then I'm worried that the bottom portion of him is going to get cooked a lot more than the top. Uh, and I didn't want to overcook them. You know, you want to try and evenly cook the dragon. So I decided, you know what? I know what's going to happen. I'm going to be like, I'll figure something out later. I'm going to finish this sculpture that's, you know, taking way longer than, than I anticipated. And then I'm going to try and do it in the grill. It's not going to work, you know, potentially not going to work. And then I'm going to have to try and move a dragon that we spent a ton of time putting details in back onto the, you know, into something like this. So I tried to position them as best as I could. So check him out. So you'll see like a whole bunch of screws, you know, screwing the armature here uh, to hold the wings because that's the other thing that I very quickly learned. I thought the, the clay would provide some kind of structure to hold the wing up. Mm -mm. So as soon as like you let go of the wing, it just goes bleh, bleh. You know, it's so heavy. So you really have to spend a lot of time tying this guy into place. That way you can touch him, you can press on him and not worry about things getting damaged. So that took quite a while, you know, so then I was like playing catch up. But remember when uh, I was, I wasn't making fun of, but I was noting, you know, I was watching videos to get ideas to see how people do things, like what techniques they use and things. So I stumbled upon one and they're all like, you know, nine minutes long, they're really super short. You know, so I figure, okay, this this process can't take that long. And so I watched this uh, one woman and she was sculpting a really nice like lady, you know, kind of like very Renaissance, you know, style uh, female figure. And it was a minute that, uh, video that was condensed into eight minutes. And it took her eight months to finish that. And so last stream, I was like, <laughs> sucks to be her. 
I'm in her boat. I'm in her boat. So a couple things that I found is that, yes, this is a very time-consuming process, especially if you want to get things looking mostly good. Now, obviously, this being a first-time clay sculpt, you know, I certainly don't want to spend two months on it because I want to get that plasma ball going. That's like the coolest part of the build. Uh, so for us, we're learning a lot of the basic steps, like how to make an armature, how to foil it up properly. And I made another boo-boo, which I'm going to show you guys. And how to add the clay. Does it stick? How to make some basic textures. And that's basically the objective for this thing. So this thing, if that's the objective, has already surpassed a lot of my thoughts. Uh, because I spent, you know, time making muscles and things. And, you know, it... it it's not the smoothest, but we're gonna texturize the entire surface. So I spent a lot of time trying to smooth things out. And this clay, I actually kind of like it. It's a stiffer clay. Uh, and it, I think it helps kind of hold things together, especially when you want to make thin horns. I think that they'll hold structure a little bit better than the thinner clays. The thinner clay advantage is that you can do a lot more details. It blends and smooths a lot easier. So. With this, you can't really add water to smooth it out. Instead, they do make solvents that you put a couple drops into your clay and that'll help soften it. So if you're having a lot of trouble with it being too stiff. So I may get some of those and just, or you know, a bottle of that and play around with it, you know, see kind of how that works. But I think all in all, with just some basic clay and tools, I think we're we're rocking here and you might be wondering what the heck this is so the last stream i super struggled with seeing for myself and allowing you guys to see what was going on as well so i almost felt like i had to put you guys like right here like right here so this is what this is for we're gonna spend a lot of time just like this and i'm going to reach around and be working i may be reaching through and working that way so you'll see like a lot of hands and, and dragon you know and you'll see like what's you know on the other side of the camera which is a big hot mess right so let's get on with it i'm going to position this in place and today's objective is is just to play around with some textures you know obviously we're not going to finish this uh in the beginning you know i was like oh yeah then we'll texture the whole thing and then no no it, it takes a lot of time so i can show you kind of like some ideas that i was playing around with with the wings and let me get this uh, kind of positioned here and hopefully you guys will be able to see so let's switch ourselves over here and so you can kind of see what I've been doing with the wing. I started to create these uh, wrinkles and there's a, a, a light like right here shining in your guys' eyes, you know, but this little box here is covering it. Uh, but it's creating a glare here that's kind of tough to see. So let me see if I turn on my light on my end. There we go. I, I think that looks better, right? Yeah, we'll see if... Uh, this is a webcam, so we'll see if it focuses, you know, decent, you know, right on here. I started playing around with some wrinkles and, you know, making some wrinkled skin there. Let me move them more into place, maybe here. And I, I spent time smoothing out the wings. Is it 100% smooth? Yeah, absolutely not, you know, but I can sit here and try and smooth and smooth. And so as a test, what I did is I started to put in wrinkles and we're not even like done here. And I'm like, man, it might be kind of a waste of time to try and absolutely smooth all this stuff out if we're just going to wrinkle it all up, you know? So I figure we're kind of done with the smoothing and let's just move on to try and doing some, playing around with some skin textures. I figure we spend about an hour tonight and see what kind of skin textures we can come up with either on the dragon or on a sample piece of clay. So this is some wrinkles uh, that I've already done and you can see the holes in his wings and you might be noticing like what are these bulges like there's one there. Oop wrong way i was pointing at you guys there's one there like one there one there like what the heck is that wow if you recall that's where we put our wires to hold the different fingers <laughs> together uh and so they of course are a little bit raised so you have two options you can either bulk up the wing and so that this, this is completely smooth uh, or you can do kind of what I did. I tried to leave the wing as thin as possible, like a really thin wing, uh, and then smooth out just to kind of hide the meshing. And from what I've read, if you have good quality polymer clay, 
uh, you only need two millimeters yeah, and, it, and it's very difficult to break. Now, I don't know the quality of this clay. I don't know my clays too much other than that there's different kinds like air dry, uh, polymer that you bake in the oven, and oil-based clay. Uh, oil-based clay is kind of neat because you can actually carve into it, you know. It's, it's, uh, it seems like it's harder. Uh, and so turning him around, you can see that I started to create like an arm with some biceps. Look, he hasn't forgotten arm day. Some triceps. I wish I had these triceps. Look, instead, mine, mine look like wet, wet noodles. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Uh, and then uh, the curvature of his back. And you can see that his back is kind of... Um, contorted you know because he has just landed on this thing I didn't want to look like he was chilling he's like all contorted and stuff and I played around with adding a little bit of wrinklage here uh it looks kind of bad but I think once I move it out you know like uh, make him longer I think it'll be fine uh and then moving him along you can see the wing this wing here I'm leaving alone for now I think I'm going to beef up uh this area of the wing right here and you can see I've started adding some flaps there and turning him around he finally has a butt he fought me on this butt uh, all the entire time and here you'll notice his leg i put in some superman style uh muscles you know i'm i'm taking liberal uh you know liberal uh, artistic liberty I guess is what I'm trying to say with the muscles because heck guys that is allowed do you remember the comic books where like the superhero guys have like 50 muscles on one rib yeah like ridiculously overdrawn muscles heck why can't I do that too right you know I'm taking the the old comic book route here and adding as many muscles on top of muscles as I can right so here's his knee and then his leg now this is where I oops because if you remember, I put foil all the way down up until here. And I learned that if you look down here, I had to remove. See, look, I chopped it here and I removed the foil because his foot was just too chunky. He, just, like, he hit the buffet a little bit too much, too much and the chunks were going. So by removing that, I was able to make it real thin. And then I can follow up and make this area thin. Now you'll notice too that I elongated this leg here and the reason i'm trying to really think ahead you know for this because once this is done i don't want to like mess it up now the position is it going to exactly fit our castle probably not it'll be close though it'll be close but it's not going to exactly fit so i figured his foot will end about right here where there'll be a claw you know i guess i'll do the claw over on this side uh going through our hut and that gives me all this right here to anchor him to the pvc so what i'll probably end up doing is drilling a hole putting this guy through or even using a screw just like that right through the pvc and then build this up with stone so you don't even see this so Dave is agreeing with me. He says, all dragon have Superman muscles. Looks fantastic. All right, so he's liking this sculpt so far. And like I said, it is very easy to start going down a rabbit hole with this and start to really just like eat away hours. And I didn't realize until I spent like a whole day doing this and I figured, oh my gosh. And with the time of having to transfer him over, I was like, guys, I, I, I need you guys to buy me another day. I need another day on this. Uh, so... Uh, you know, and it definitely helped. So could I spend, you know, to add the muscles and smooth everything out and finish them up correct? Like really, really right. Probably I'd need another like at least three days, you know, but I got him to a point where I think is, I'm going to call it good enough for us to start texturizing him. And so you'll notice a couple areas here will probably be able to reach this, but anything where he's touching the tower, I think is going to be really tough. You might just have to stay smooth and we might just poke some uh, paintbrushes in there to try and add some effects. Uh, so I, of course, left this foot for last because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to think about this one a little bit more. But you see the tail going around and we can add some spikes, you know. And so far, things are kind of long. Uh, I may end up cutting all this short. So, well, I probably will end up cutting all this short. And you can see right here where it anchors up to our tower, I guess, our wooden tower. What I'm going to do is leave this on. Obviously, this has to be left on and I'm not going to put any clay on it. Once it's done baking, I'm going to snip this and this will be all hardened. 
snip this and hide this by using the air dry clay. Now air dry dries uh, 24 to 48 hours. I'll make a horn here out of air dry clay and then just let that you know sit. Any areas that get damaged we can go ahead and just add some air dry clay and I'm hoping that they stick but they do have clay adhesives. Uh, if you're finding that your clay is not sticking to clay or your clay is not sticking you know to the blue tape that we had uh, to help you out. So if I have to go that route I'll go that route but that'll allow us to kind of fix some boo-boos especially right here where things connect. I'm not going to do a ton of detail right here only because I'm constantly kind of moving it like that. Uh, so I think it's better that we use like air dry clay for this and I'm debating whether or not I want to use air dry clay for his you know his actual feet down here. But again I also made this portion here long so the foot will be backed off you know a little bit we'll have some wire. Uh, so this is kind of as far as you know I got and I'm only using just very very basic tools. So I figured for today uh, let's figure out on a separate piece of clay. This is like totally unlike me. Normally I'm just gonna start going you know to town on it kind of like I did here uh, you know and uh, because we can always smooth it out. If we don't like it we can we can smooth the whole thing out but that does add a lot of time like if you have to smooth things out. Um, plus when you're adding texture on the muscles to smooth it out and kind of recreate the muscles are kind of tough. And in order to create muscles, it's really simple. All you're doing is creating circles, ovals, and worms. That is it. And then you kind of uh, blend them into place and that's how you start getting these elevations uh, going. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and uh, let's, I guess we'll go here now. And I'm gonna prepare, oh, where's this going? I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna move you guys over here. I'm gonna move you guys to the side here and I'm going to just turn this off because this is like obnoxious. <laughs> and I'll move him to the side. And our above camera is gonna be a little dark, a little dark, because I stole, you know, this from up there. So let's see here. So these are some of the worms, you know, that I talked about creating, and I'm gonna bring you guys into the action. There we go. <laughs> uh, and so you can uh, use things like this to create, a lot of my muscles were created by just making an oval like that and laying it on top of clay. Here's my brick. This is all I had. This is the second brick now. Uh, and so I ran out in case we run out during the stream, uh, except uh, the only thing that they had was white. You know, I don't know what's going on with like craft stores and home improvement stores have been like having all kinds of shortages and stuff. So uh, basically all you do is just put it on top of your piece and then you start just kind of smoothing it into place, you know, and these humps begin to create muscles. Now it really, really helps to have some kind of reference, you know, so I had a couple photos here, but at the end of the day, you're never going to find a reference that's the exact pose you're trying to do. And so I think in retrospect, you know, if you're a beginner, probably easiest to start with a pose, you know, like on a picture and preferably something in a store because they usually take pictures from all around you know the product so you get all views you know versus something like this where you're like you only have one view uh, so you can't really see what's going on in deep in his belly area although this one's pretty good because you can you can see most of it you know uh, but so other dragon poses you gotta extrapolate a little bit let me move this guy you know kind of back and I also found from last time using smaller bits of clay and kneading those. I don't know if you guys remember, I was kneading some big old pieces of clay and you know, definitely tougher to smooth that way. Uh, and so I also found that when you're adding your first layer of clay like we did to the wings for the last stream, I think I was like overly concerned with getting it so smooth. I'm telling you, don't even worry about it because you're going to be adding more layers and it, it you know, it, it really doesn't matter and you're putting time where it don't belong. Uh, so the only thing that's pretty left undone here, I figured we'd do everything except for his head. Now, obviously, it looks like he's got a salamander head. He is missing his jaw, uh, upper jaw with the nose here and the lower jaw that's going to come up under this. I'm gonna keep this, and right now it's kind of anchored to this little thing here. I'm gonna keep this, once he's baked, I'm gonna straighten this out. And this is actually what's going to glue to our wizard. 
and the fire will be shooting out and the wizard will be like, you know, doing his thing, but no one will see this rod connecting the entire thing together. So I think I'm going to try that first before using the acrylic rods underneath the, uh, the wizard. So I think that'll be pretty, a pretty clever, you know, disguise, a clever ruse. So Dave is saying, circles, overs, and ovals, and squares. Oh my, that's pretty much what 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 it is, you know. And I'm sure there's far more advanced techniques, you know. But I found that was just the easiest way to build up, and also building up in thinner layers. Um, in thicker layers was a little bit tougher, especially with this clay, which this is definitely a harder clay you know to to work with in terms of stiffness not that it's difficult uh, to work with once you get the hang of it you start to kind of you know figure it out but you know this is our first clay sculpt and so we're kind of having fun and learning the the ins and outs so let's see if this piece is kind of big enough here and i may have like a little a cookie roller here let's make some cookies Actually, be nice to have a bigger piece. That's kind of wimpy. I'm like cheaping out on you guys, giving you a tiny little piece to look at and, and work with. So I think what I'm going to do is steal this light here and put it back because it's a little bit dark for you guys to be able to see all the very cool textures. I'm just trying to wedge it where it doesn't want to wedge. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be on this camera it likes being with you guys there we go air a little bit more light although this is kind of reflective but i think once i get this kind of needed you don't want to focus on our amazing work so yeah, that's pretty much the idea if we can kind of like, ooh, this looks good, that doesn't look good, you know, we prefer this, that, or the other. I'll bring you guys in just a little more. And let's get this kneaded out. Yeah, that gives us a little more space to kind of, you know, test a couple things out. All right. So in terms of skin you know I have something like this we get our little roller out of the way let's see I got a these are some of the ones you can tell by the dirtiness that I've been using the most uh, some of these rubber tools here they're great for pressing without creating like cuts uh, in the you know in the clay although this is this end here is sharp enough to create like a gentle cut if you need to and let's see here these are super useful over here, which these are these ball uh, style ones. You can smooth things out. You can make like shallow grooves. So I think we'll be using those a lot. And let's see what else I've got. And they have, you know, it, all kinds of sizes uh, on either end. So you can get a medium size one and then switch over and get a really, really tiny one. And then the uh then this poker here which is like kind of a needle and i'm sure we can do like wrinkles and things like that with it and dave is asking did you get the roller at the craft store or the or the home store so this roller actually came in the kit that you sent over of all these cool tools now there's about like maybe 25 tools i mean i just keep pulling them out so what i did is pick the ones that are most applicable you know to this project because some of the tools are better for oil uh, clay or different kinds of clay uh, whereas these are more like for pressing and embossing and engraving and things like that so yeah this roller yeah it's all that same brand so this is thanks to dave he's awesome he's always hitting up my like amazon mental wish list all the time oh all the time so uh, I also like this double edge knife here. So I've been using this quite a bit. I haven't really used this scooper, you know, type thing here uh, quite yet. So those are kind of the ones. And then I thought this was interesting. This is a very hard bristle brush. And I thought, you know what? I use, uh, you know, I use the, the these bristle brushes you guys have seen me use it on foam you know to create our stones and to create our porous textures so I started going mm, 
we can probably apply some foam, you know, techniques to this thing. So I thought, you know, by watching and watching other people make dragons, uh, oftentimes I've seen everything from basic, uh, let's see here, just taking, here's our needle end right here. And like, let's say for a belly, you know, I've found that a lot of people just make little creases like this. You know, kind of like a scales on a snake. And mine aren't very straight. I'm just kind of going through it, you know, pretty quick. And then as it, as you proceed towards the tail, they start to become closer together. So on the chest, they're further apart. And then they start to become closer together. And then you can start doing this. So I would say this is probably the most beginner level, you know, of making scales. And then, of course, when you paint it, uh, well, then you get all of your grooves and things like that, that the paint picks up. So a lot like what we did with our castle, Frankenstein, if you really think about it, this is kind of how we made our bricks. You know, we made some horizontal lines and then we added our bricks. So this is just, you know, making a, a brick castle and you can already see that the scales are beginning to form. So I thought this pattern would be very cool to do on the belly and uh, throughout the bottom of the tail right here. And so, you know, that's, and it's super easy and it doesn't require a lot of smoothing, a lot of access because that's going to be our biggest problem along the belly area. I can reach part of the chest right here, but the belly area is going to be pretty inaccessible and some of the beginning of the tail. So I thought a pattern like this is probably going to be the easiest, you know, to contend with. Uh, so that's some uh, Bella tail and I'm just out of curiosity. Let me poke some holes. I kind of like that. And let's see if I can uh, bring it up towards you guys, if it will focus. Hello. Put my hand on here. Oh, let me back it out just a little bit. Sometimes it helps it, it helps it think. But I'm kind of liking what I see on this end right here which is these little holes, kind of like dimpled skin. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm just trying to find a place where the there's some good light for it. Oh, there we go, I can just hold it like that. Uh, so yeah, you know, for belly, I think that's kind of neat. Uh, for skin, we can easily dimple it like that, but I've also seen some other skin. So I'm going to, you know, just turn this around. It's got some uh, patterning here, but I don't think it'll matter. Let me, Oop, there we go. Yeah, even with a light, it's uh, it's so black, it's absorbing all the light, you know, if our, our cart could only do the same thing, our sauce caddy, you know, which I got stuff going on with that one too, so I might be able to sneak him in uh, for a cameo. So I've seen a lot of people use these ball end ones here. You know, this one might be a little bit too big, but let's try it up here, and all you do is dot it. And this would be the surface of the back skin. Basically everything but the belly. And all I'm doing is creating a series of a whole bunch of different dots. With no space in between, you know, pretty much. And let's see if I switch to kind of the medium size one and dot over here. Uh, which I think is a much more realistic skin than this big one. So if we just dot, dot, dot. You can see this one is with our larger ball. So you can see, you know, it's a bigger dimplage. Uh, and here it's just kind of a fine uh, dimplage. And I'm wondering if we combine that then with areas of this, how that would look. Like if I were to just kind of poke and then connect the two. So perhaps we can mix areas of uh, high dimplage which would be those areas that are rough, knees, uh, you know, where wherever I guess we humans have rough skin, we can use the bigger balls. <laughs> and then where we have thin skin, we can use the littler, you know, the littler ball uh, along with this, 
you know, this little uh, bristles right here. And so, almost looks like, you know, volcano. Uh, but if you take a look there, see how you get a better transition between the larger indentations of the big ball and the smaller indentations of the, of the little ball. And then you have this transition area here in between. And so I think by mixing these three sizes, I think we got our dragon skin, you know, pretty easy dragon skin. And then for the difference, we can make the belly scales. Uh, and of course, those were very simplistic be belly scales. We can always come back and, and now I've mushed our poor little uh, belly scales here, but we can always come back with something like a knife and then add, you know, like little, little shadows and things like that. So here, all I'm doing is just scratching it, you know, scratching the scales a little bit. And that kind of makes it look, you know, like he's a little bit more damaged. damaged. So, and of course it's been uh, flattened a bit, but you can see kind of what I did on this side. I started to add more details. So I think those are some different kind of, you know, techniques that I think we can use. And I think that will look good. Now for wings, that's a little bit different. And so I started to kind of do some, uh, wrinkles you know so i think the the wings are going to be less that dimply dimp and they're going to be like thin with uh, very thin fine lines you know so i think we'll we'll go for that look for there and i think probably that's the toughest the toughest look to make them look webbed to make them look delicate uh, so let's see if I can roll up another one here and see if we can practice. Although I've already been practicing on the piece, which, you know, is such the Rachel thing to do. So let's make a, let's make a cookie here. A sweet, delicious black. Oh, this is a dark chocolate cookie. The darkest chocolate you can find. So here we go. And man, it, for you guys, it looks like pitch black in comparison to this. Uh, so I'm wondering if I can just, you know what? I can probably use this. That might be a little bit better. Cause yeah, heck yeah, that, that aluminum foil was pretty bad. And if this is, uh, you know, if this gets ruined, that's okay. I can just print out another copy. So we're good there. And so for fine lines, I wanted to test out a couple. Here's a wooden one. And this is great for smoothing. Uh, so I use this on the wings a lot where I took different sections of the wings and literally rolled out, you know, cookies on the wings. Uh, and then let's see here. So I really like this guy. Uh, let's see if we can create some, some scratches. So this is more like an exacto knife and I'm also trying to anticipate ahead how we're going to paint this thing. Uh, so if the scratches are not very deep and they're very fine, like with an X-Acto knife, you don't always get the, the greatest paint. So you do want to add some more shallow, shallow cuts. And here all I'm doing is just creating a webbing. And I think I'm liking this tool. So let's see if I can bring you guys in. It's kind of rough. Well, it does focus once in a while, but yeah, like something like this, maybe, um, sometimes it's kind of hard to envision when you have it on a, on a flat piece, but basically I'm creating just kind of, I think of it almost like a stained glass, you know, different stained glass pieces and you just, you know, start out that way. So there's this. And then let's see if I can find the tiniest, I mean, that doesn't even look like a, a ball end, but yeah, it is. It's, it's the tiniest one that I have. And let's see if we mimic the same thing. Cause some tools push the clay around and then you get kind of a bunch up of clay or, or clay ripping and things. So of course this works differently, you know, depending on the clay that you're using. So this one I'm already noticing, you can't push down too hard because then the clay bunches up and tears like that. So what if I just gently drag it? That might work. Kind of made a, a spider web that time. 
and I'm trying to envision the the size of the dragon you know because if you're making a tiny 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 dragon then of course using something like this big would be way way too big although see this one I think is too shallow it's more it's just like a bleh, you know so I'm kind of almost leaning towards this it's got some nice sharp very visible wrinkles this one is a little more shallow um yeah, and uh, Dave is calling them dragon veins. Heck yeah, they're dragon veins. Almost like it. Yeah, little veins oxygenating all of those little membranes and, and muscles. My, my Superman comic book, muscles <laughs> that don't exist. I'm like, I know, I'm going to put 200 muscles on this one rib. Yeah. So I think we have some ideas there. And we can, you know, practice some of this stuff on the wing we saw you can already see the paper is is pretty stained here and that's one of the tricks the homemade tricks that i read that you can do with clay is say your clay is way too hard you can roll it in thin sheets and put it in between paper and that'll absorb you know the molecule or the substance that makes the clay hard i don't know if it's called like the plasticizers you know but there is a substance that uh, basically uh, controls that's the word it basically controls how hard the clay is but i think all in all this stiffer clay it may have some disadvantages but i think the advantages outweigh it because for something like this especially when i'm using tools for the first time i won't realize and i'll be using a tool and then but the back of it will be hitting something so something like this is a lot more you know it's got strength against it so whatever detail i put in doesn't necessarily deform so let me set you guys back up again and we're gonna try this this pose here and see if we can we can work around what we're trying to do so let's see here i'm trying to pose him so you don't get blinded by the light there blinded by the light oh you know i was gonna do that mm -hmm. so i'm gonna grab the light up here as well all right and i'm going to blind you guys in in essence here let me let me quit doing that right so get this guy on so you guys can actually see something. So I started to make those wrinkles with that knife. And let me see if I can position him a little bit more this way. Come here. All right. So I'm either going to be going through like this or around. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out if I can, uh, if I can do this. So I found it's going to get tough to get in this crevice, you know, down here just because the wing... Uh, goes in so much and so I'll show you how I made this section right here and if you guys kind of like what's going on here it needs a little bit of fixing up you know and I think I can I think I can make it better uh, you saw I used the ball tool so you see some tearing here so I can smooth that out and kind of you know give it another go and you'll see that I conveniently stopped where this groove here is and that's where our wire is holding this finger to this finger so in order to continue down here, what we're going to do is make a worm. <laughs> so let me grab a piece here. And in essence, I'm going to just roll it and start making a worm. Oh, Dave has got the lyrics down, revved up like a deuce. You know the rumor in the night. Yeah, so he's got it. He knows the words. Sometimes I'll know like, you know, a portion and I'm like, oh, I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> I don't remember the rest. Especially if you haven't like heard them in a while, you know? All right, so I have like a worm <laughs> going on here, an earthworm. And so I'm going to back this guy on up just slightly. And I'm going to actually be looking through the, the loop here. So I'm going to disappear. I'm going to duck down like this. And I'm going to put him here. And also, I wasn't too super, super concerned. You see some metal poking out here, like tiny, tiny, tiny. They're probably going to get covered anyway. So I'm not super, you know, nutty about them. And so I'm going to stop about there because, again, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. I think I want to bake it and then complete this area once it's been baked. 
So the first thing I do is I start to just kind of smooth it out with my thumb and you see it starts to blend. And if that's too hard, then I grab this little rubber tool. It's got a tip on this end and the cool thing, it's got like a, a cylinder right there. So you can almost use the cylinder like that to smooth things out. So I was smoothing the wing out here, smoothing it, you know, out here. And so this is pretty, pretty nice. And so you can see how black he is. But here, you just want to smudge, just smudge it. And it's nice because it doesn't tear the clay, even like a stiff clay like this doesn't get torn. And so I figure you'll see how long this process takes. We'll probably not even finish the wing, you know, but at least you guys will see some of the main uh, components of how we did it. You guys saw how we did the skin. And so I can go ahead and skin him up, <laughs> skin him up for next time. And then I'll go ahead and get all this textured right here. Oh, you guys can't see anything. Uh, get his little head textured right here. And what I'm going to do is build a triangle for his top jaw and a triangle for his bottom jaw. And then we'll kind of figure it out from there because then we got, we have to definitely build his head out to partially cover these LEDs. And then with the most still hands possible, I'm going to try and do like a black pupil on them. So we'll see. We'll see how that, that, oops. We'll see how that happens. But you guys see the importance of really like anchoring this guy down because you do have to be somewhat abusive to it, you know, when you when you do this process, or I guess I do, you know. Uh, perhaps uh, after this clay sculpture, if we want to try, you know, another one, maybe something smaller or heck bigger, heck, I'm, I'm game for anything. We can try different brands, see how they work. Uh, but all in all, you know, I thought this was going to be impossible, but if you just kind of break it down into literal uh, circles, squares, like Dave said, but really these worms, see, so that kind of helps to create like a bone type of thing. And it looks pretty bad right now. And that's how the other one looked until I started to add the, you know, the wrinkles and things. So the one thing I didn't do with the other one was blend as well. So this time around, I'm like, let me go ahead and blend. And I actually found the, the big ball uh, stylus the way to go for this one because it smudges nicely. And it's okay if you still see, you know, a little bit because it's a bone. It's supposed to be kind of separate from the skin. And I'm just gonna pat it down. Most of it is just rubbing like this and petting. You just pet the clay and it, it behaves. All right. So hopefully you're not seeing most of you know my hand and not the actual piece. That was the objective of putting the camera like this and showing you guys all my mess back there, all my ladders that I use just for, you know, house stuff. Sometimes, sometimes you just need ladders. And so what I'm going to do is cover this little, you know, I made a boo-boo here. We have definite, uh, definite metal coming out. So let's uh, do that. And you can see I'm like hunched over that back here, you know, working like this. But this will look good. I'm just going to add a worm because the clay is a little thin and so I do feel that we are hitting the the metal a little bit so I'm just gonna do this and first I try and uh, smear with my hands but sometimes if you're working on something so delicate it kind of just botches it too much and so it's easier to go in with a tool and so so I shall go in here and just roll it you know we're making like a mini cookie now and just push that clay down up and over our our metal and just hide that and once we do that we can continue our wrinklage wrinklage and I'm using the cylinder portion to really smooth it out or as best as I can. Maybe I should just hit it with a cylinder from the get-go. I 
I like this uh, rubber end because, oh, it just exposed more metal. So what I'm gonna do is push this clay. I'm gonna borrow some clay from over here because it's getting a little thick over there. And just, I'll just borrow it a little bit. So yeah, it's a lot of pushing clay around until you get a look that you think you like. You know, sometimes I don't even know if I like it. And I found um, I'm pretty good at doing long sessions. You know, I found that I'm pretty disciplined that way. But that being said, it is sometimes best to just step away because there are times where I'm like, hate it, hated it, hate it on everything that I'm doing. And then you step away and you're like, you know what? That doesn't look so bad. Let's just go with it. So... I think I got this pretty well smooth guys enough for us to start putting wrinkles at least better than I did on the other side so I say we go for it and I'm gonna hold it up like this while putting the wrinkles in and I'm just reaching across you guys yeah, how rude and let me turn him like that and so I like some of these tall wrinkles so I'm going to like really cut in deep and I'm not too worried if I expose a little metal because it's deep enough where our ink wash will deal with it and that's the other thing with the polymer clay is that you can use acrylic uh, paint acrylic water-based paint because this thing is uh, waterproof Whereas the air dry is not waterproof. So we're going to use our friend Mod Podge to go ahead and seal it. And so I'm adding some starter. There's some starter wrinkles like that. And they look kind of crude. Uh, but then we can start adding some kind of diagonal ones. You know, kind of like that. I'm imagining like uh, either lizard skin or turtle skin. I like turtles. <laughs> One of my favorite animals. You know what? Because they know how to just stop and smell the roses. And they end up living super long for it. You know, so maybe there's a, a lesson there. And I'm kind of cutting it at an angle uh, like this. Because I'm thinking of doing a curvature like that which is really tough to do. I probably have to almost lean this way, way back in order to do it. But um, we'll figure it out. <laughs> There's just no good way. The other thing I noticed when I watch people sculpt is that they pretty much sculpt on the stand or the display that they're going to use. They generally, not all, you know, but generally they don't do what we're trying to do, which is, you know, Sculpt it on here and then trying to move it over there. Uh, so here to make this a little bit more, I'm just going to push, you know, up in, in that direction. And if we add, you know, a couple slits like that, and then if it appears to exacto knifey, I guess, I don't know like how else to call it, like exacto knifey. Um, then you can just pet it a little bit. Good track, you know, and that kind of helps smooth it out just a little bit. And go like that, add a couple more. And yeah, look, our worm is indistinguishable. And it gave us a little more height for us to create these uh, skin humps or these skin, uh, skin wrinkles which on the dragon wrinkles is a good thing. A smooth dragon is not real, real scary. So we want our dragon to have all the old stuff. Uh, we want crow's feet. We want baggy eyes. <laughs> because I have to imagine that he probably also hasn't slept much. If he's going for the orb and he's willing to fight such a powerful wizard, then I'm thinking, yeah, he's, he's hurting. And I know my big old hands are totally getting getting in the way sometimes. So I'm going to try and cut like this. So that's looking, that's looking interesting, guys. And I'm going to add some so it's not just like down, down, down in one direction. 
we can add some smaller kind of sideways wrinkles or diagonal wrinkles. Wrinkles on the diagonal. So it doesn't look like, oh, somebody obviously just went in with a razor blade, which is exactly what we're doing. <laughs> Okay, so I use a, a decent amount of force to get it started and then just kind of lightly drag so that way the clay doesn't tear or gather at the end because then, ugh, like it did there. Let me poke the dragon now. <laughs> Most of the time you don't want to poke the sleeping dragon. But this time, we're good with that. We're good with that. So most of the lines I've made are kind of this top half here. I haven't really gone into the crevice quite yet because we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a big old worm and we're going to put it on each of these fingers. We're going to try and follow along. And I just noticed there's a huge hump here. What is this? Oh, it's wire. That's why. And so what I noticed is that on the wing, I tried to like not build the clay thick. I didn't want these big old thick wings. That's not sexy. Right, we want some thin wings and those are more menacing, like they're almost like a paper uh, coming at you. But I noticed that with the mesh, you do have to build it up a little because as soon as you smooth this side like this, you go on the other side and it's all like mesh pattern. So then you smooth the mesh pattern and you come back here and it's mesh pattern. So it's just a losing battle. So I found that I had to build it up enough to hide the mesh, but then the ends of the wings right here looked very like fat you know it, like this 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 guy he's trying to hit the buffet while losing his padonkadonk he can't make you know make up his mind as to like what weight he wants to be so you can see instead what i did was built the wings a little bit longer to thin them out and i even all i did to create this kind of cool tear was i took it and i just pulled and created like a nice long little tear and so i want to do that with you know the rest of the bottom of the wings uh, and yes, David Beck is like, puppies, that is Ripley. And it's probably because Eeyore, her bestie bestie, uh, is outside or doing something where she can't be with him. And that just makes her very angry because she likes getting her way at all times. Heck, guys, I wish I could get my way at all times. Wouldn't that be nice, right? So think of when we put our ink wash on this thing. That's going to look pretty cool or our acrylic wash I should say is probably the more accurate term so just by putting these creases in we've got some natural kind of skin folds going along his uh, his wing there that looks pretty neat looks somewhat realistic Adding our wrinkles and I think I'm gonna stop kind of like right here this be kind of the last one until I figure out what it is I really want to do with that whole situation there and I'm just gonna follow this down I bring down our lines a little bit see what that looks like and then add some smaller ones and I'm almost just kind of like scratching it and then just adding a couple diagonal ones to create kind of a, a webbing like that. And I know my hands like completely in the way sometimes. And that might be kind of enough for, for wings. And I'm thinking, oh guys, am I gonna ruin it? I almost feel like going for it, but I may ruin it. I'm just uh, searching, I'm searching for it. Give me a sec here as I try and find it. It was just here. I showed you guys it. So let me see if I can find it. And you should probably know which one I'm talking about. This guy right here. I almost feel like adding a couple. Just a couple. Oh, I don't want to ruin it. But maybe like right here. Kind of doesn't do anything. So, I know my hand is totally in the way. Maybe I'll work over here. It kind of adds a little bit of texture. 
And Dave Beck, he's always, he's always egging me on, do it, do it. And then I'll be like, oh no, I have to spend the whole weekend fixing what I've done. But no, this actually um, helps soften, I think, these lines a little bit. Uh, and so we're getting just a tiny bit of, uh, yeah, tiny, a, a huge portion of my hand right there. So, okay, so I think that looks good. I can uh, do that. So let's try and create our worm for inside here and see how that looks. So I figured if we try a little bit of everything, we figure kind of what we like and what we don't like, and we have our skin texture. I'm just kind of reluctant. Whoop, there we go, move you guys. I'm kind of reluctant to do it on his skin right now because I'm not sure if I'm quite done yet. And I wanna build out his neck first, and then I'll hit him all with that exact pattern that I showed you guys, and I wanna build this up first. So I don't wanna, get them all beautifully textured and then be making these wings and touching him and things like that. So once he's textured, no touchy, no touchy. So let's see if we can create another worm. So let's uh, give that, uh, that camera a break there. I'm gonna move this guy over and I'm going to move you over. Let me shut you off. Cause I'm like working like this and like this for you guys it's like I'm performing surgery or something like that so let's create uh let's see how long is this worm gonna be this has got to be a pretty long worm so I say we do this and this is gonna be way too much of a long worm for that camera angle so we're gonna have to like really really back it on up so I'm gonna be rolling this we're making pretzels now so first cookies and pretzels. So heck, this uh, clay is not such a bad thing, right? So just with a couple tools, I mean, you can make a ton of things. And like for the scratches we're making, if you really think about it, you can use toothpicks, uh, you can use, uh, you know, for sewing those little pins with the ball ends, you can use that too to create the skin. Heck, you know what I didn't try is aluminum foil, my aluminum foil ball that we use on, uh, you know, our foam miniature. So far, we are using a couple of the castle techniques, you know, like especially for the belly. You saw how I plan to do that, and that's going to be, you know, pretty pretty tough to reach. So I want to roll this out pretty thin, this earthworm right here. Or pretzel. Pretzel. We're going to stick with the food. And so this is to represent the spine, you know, the bone. So I'm going to imagine, you know, that area is elevated, just like in this picture. You can see all the spines. So we want to create that kind of spine scenario. And this is kind of round for a spine, but I'm hoping that once I get it on there, we can pinch it along the way to make those spikes. But first, let's get it all well blended. And so I think this is a good one to, to start with. And I'm gonna move him kind of in front here. Put you guys on back. And let's see, we'll put your, the surgery back on. The surgery is back on. And let me grab him here. Set him up. So that way you guys hopefully don't get blinded. And switch. There we go. Yeah, try and like uh, not have them on the light there. And we're getting a lot of that glare again. So let's see if I turn on our own personal light. Uh, much, much better. So the objective is to go from here all the way to down here. And I'll push them back. That way you guys can, can see more. All right, I'm going to try and do this as gracefully as possible without knocking into you guys. So let me... Oh... I just put him on top of our pretzel. Let me clean our pretzel. Let me clean him. <laughs> all right. So all the little bones come out of this corner. So one here, one here, you know, here, here. So I'm going to try and do kind of a sexy curve. You know, maybe I'm not going to pat down too hard. So that way we can kind of change 
the curvature if we want to a little bit. And that's going to be more like that. You know, that's pretty good, I think. Maybe this move this guy over here a little bit. So that's kind of a nice spine. What do you all think? I'm going to go ahead and pinch him off at the bottom here. And we have some more pretzel for another wing. So let's see here. Rather than blend him in, this is going to be a tough, tough blend. Perhaps I can already use this tool right here and kind of do the same thing. We're going to be making lines like that. And for this, I may have to tilt him up again just to make our lives or my life a little bit easier. He's going to have to. And this would never happen on the PVC pipe, you know, so he really needs to be anchored down uh, for something like this. And so the idea is this already has kind of a raised bump. I'm going to use this as a guide. I'm going to just cut him. So basically I'm cutting our worm, segmenting, segmenting him. This was a smooth worm. So whatever species of smooth worm, and I'm beginning to segment him now, like making, making him a real worm. Ooh, I accidentally poked him right there, but that's okay. I don't think, no one, no one can see it. And now if I tilt, is he blending? Oh, look, he's kind of blending on his own right there. So that's pretty good. And I'm cutting him so far in this downward direction because we're gonna have to do the same thing going the other way. So um, let me do it this, I'm gonna try and hold the tool this way so you guys actually see what the heck is going on. Like, what is she doing? Segmenting, she's talking and I just see a big old knuckle, a knuckle sandwich in my face. And Dave is saying pretzels and peanut butter. Oh, that's really good. I also love pretzels and dipping cheese and pretzels and mustard. A good like German style pretzel and uh, mustard with your favorite beer. That's delicious. And I'm beginning to add some cross striping. And rather than be precise, you know, maybe doing something like this might be easier. Just cutting into it. Maybe if I pet it down a little bit. That's looking pretty good, guys. Yeah, so the worm is getting segmented. This action kind of uh, helps mush it into place. Because having worked with so many other mediums, you begin to question like, does clay really stick to each other? Do you have to really like, you know, get the, the layers blended or can a layer just merely sit on top of another layer and when you bake it, they don't pop off? You know, that's one thing I don't know. So I try and get a little bit of stickage, you know, to it. And Dave is saying, I think you just described Oktoberfest. Darn straight I did. Oktoberfest. All right, so I think we got some some good uh, wrinklage there. And now the difficulty is going to be going the other way. I'm going to try and rainbow my arm over you guys. So let's see if I can do that. And just kind of, I'm going to try and use the same lines. And this begins to kind of connect both sides of the wings. So that way you don't get one side and... And maybe I can do less wrinkles. So this is looking pretty. 
better than what I thought it was gonna look. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> At least we'll learn a lot of the fundamentals, you know, and that's pretty much what we're doing. And then we'll paint the heck out of it. Make it look all good. Fierce. And so we need a color scheme. Some of you guys liked the blue color scheme of the Game of Thrones dragon. And so we can definitely stick with that. And so we got more worm. And literally, that's what we're going to do for the whole wing. You know, so this worm will be like a, a good example of how it looks. So I'm going to start with the bottom because it's so much easier. The top is rough. And I'm hoping, am I mushing the tail? No, I'm not mushing the tail. That's the other part. You end up like mushing things. And I'm gonna put a couple cuts on top of our metal to kind of disguise it. And you know, again, this metal band here is holding this spine to this spine right here. And one of the things I learned for the other wing is I'm like, after claying this up, I'm like, this is annoying. I learned my lesson. So what I did was I would loop right on the spine i did one two three four loops tiny think of it as a stapler that you just bend the legs and clamp it down much much easier than trying to create these like i thought it would be like cool and i can like incorporate it into the clay and all that no no trust me trust me it gets in the way it just gets in the way so i noticed that our spine is kind of bending a little bit so i'm going to try and correct it Course correction. Oh, overcorrected, overcorrected. And I'm going to try and go the other way. Oh, now I'm going to go the other way. Let me see if I can move him. There we go. And so I'm going to tilt this guy even more back. Hopefully, I won't uh, crush anything in the process. But we'll get our couple, couple more wrinkles. All right, not bad, guys. And I'm kind of liking, it's probably difficult to see on camera, but there's a very slight skin dimples going on from, you know, our little poke, you know, our little poker Brillo brush or, you know, little rust rust cleaner brush that I call it. So definitely gonna incorporate that once we're done. Just kind of give it a couple areas, oops, of that. And here with these tears along the wings, that's pretty cool. And I'm trying to keep a somewhat even, you know, arch, but not, not too much, not too much. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and ruin what I just said and add in a couple you know, just diagonals. Like old uh, dry skin, like I got going on right here. Look at that, it's super dry. I feel like working with the clays dried out my, my skin for all these days. And so we'll add some more. And I really do like these tears was a good idea guys I'm gonna put some on the bottom of the wing as well uh, we can practice some of that once we're done this uh, you know this uh, what did I call it worm so yeah we still have a little bit of a bend in our worm but I'm not too worried because it accompanies our hole if you look at kind of our whole situation right there uh, it kind of looks like maybe his bone uh, might have got a little bit broken here that's the story I'm sticking with heck or it's got so many muscles <laughs> and his bones. I'm gonna put a couple cuts in here. So yeah, this tool, it's a little exacto knifey, you know, the, the effect, but I think it works. I think it's better than the ball stylus uh, because it's too flat, I think. And I'm gonna lean back, lean back. just kind of connect all these together 
So I'm thinking when this is painted, I think it's gonna look pretty good. And what I might do and just make a couple cuts up like this. Let's just make our lives easier. That way it's pre-cut and you can just drag. And oh yeah, it definitely stays in place much better that way with the pre-cutting. <laughs> oh, we definitely don't want him falling. He already kind of fell sideways a little bit. And there's a lot of torn um, aluminum foil. That's the word. Aluminum foil. Uh, just because I had to remove it from the legs. And so you'll see some like little aluminum foil bits in his skin that I tried to pick off, but I wasn't super, super successful. So let's see here. Yes, the wrinkles. Now there are a couple areas I'm already noticing I probably should have built up a little bit thicker. Uh, I was a little too conservative with the clay, but I'm not too worried because we're painting this and it's not like the wires are sticking out in a, look at me, I'm a wire type of format they're flat that's the important thing as long as they're not sticking up past your piece that becomes much tougher to hide with paint but i think that we're pretty good here oh i cut i cut him i cut his uh right there it's totally cut but let's see if i can there we go i kind of mushed it back together guys so this is pretty forgiving. Like, you know, and again, if you don't like it, you can just remove the whole thing and start all over again with your clay. And for practice, this stuff is great, the polymer clay, because you never have to bake it. You can just leave it. And what I've been doing is just putting a paper bag over it, not paper bag, plastic bag. Uh, and then for longer term storage, I'm gonna saran wrap this thing. Uh, you know, if I don't get to work on it for a while, that way, it stays nice and, and soft and it doesn't harden unless you bake it you know so if you don't bake it it should stay it's just you don't want the quality of the clay to suffer so if you have a hot garage probably not a good idea you know so you want to keep it in a cool dry place and that's what I try and do here and cover it with saran wrap or even if I uh, simply oh I didn't even finish the rest of this wing up here. So we could go ahead and do that. We're getting a couple prep. Oop, budget you guys. Let me just bring you guys a little bit closer here. Getting you a little bit of a practice on our wing. It's like, yeah, we did a the tiniest practice run on that one piece and now we're like, yeah, we're, we're good to go. Let's just actually do it on the actual piece. It's how very Rachel of me. It's exactly how I roll. <laughs> but I am pushing uh, Bob Ross to the limit about this little happy mistake business. Like really? Happy mistake? Let me show you happy mistake. But no, it's so far. I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. So... All right, so I think we have kind of the hang of wrinkles. And he's looking pretty wrinkled right there. I think he's gonna look awesome when we paint him. And let me move you guys down like that so you can kind of behold. And I will pan, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna give up my, my day job anytime soon to be a camera man. Uh, but I think all in all, it, you know, it's it's a basic, but it, it looks pretty convincing. It looks pretty wrinkled there. I do like some of these flaps that I have going on here. And I got some, like, wimpy flaps going here. So I figure if there's a way to, you know, maybe we can pull. <gasps> oh, no. Let me, let me put him back. No one will ever notice. There. I'll just uh, pinch. Pinch my way out. There. See? I pinched. 
and I'll put my hands yep so if you just pinch rather than pull like I did I'm gonna pinch here again and just pinch my way out oh oh that didn't work but you know what tears might not be a bad thing so that's how that looks got a couple torn bits of wing that's looking pretty good and oh it's thick down here guys I can probably do the same look I'm just gonna pinch my way pinch well, that's cool put my hand there so you guys can see yeah we got some tears yeah so that's the the wing you know I can go ahead and it's basically repeating exactly all we did again and again and again and making another spine and another and another spine and so with this I'm almost tempted to cut it and see if maybe we can make a horn and on the other side let me flip him around basically all I'm going to do too is recreate the same thing on this side and do the spines and the you know obviously the access on here is going to be very difficult in there so uh, I'll do the best that I can and then as we rotate this guy right here you can see even doing his belly like right in there is gonna be a little bit tough but you know that's why I picked a simple pattern I think we can do a little bit hints hints of where we can see uh, this thing so let me kind of position him here and so you'll see that from up here to here's the next spike down here so I think until I get these done maybe I will leave these long because I will get lost you know so then I'll do another one kind of curved this way and then here's another spike right here so now the curvatures start to get more extreme and cool and here you can almost see going from his arm this bulge right here where our final curvature goes and this little wire here I can feel him right there so and here's another you can see this ugly you know thing that's where a wire is connecting a finger to a finger but we're going to use this spine technique right here to kind of help disguise some of these and make them look like larger wing folds more than anything else so they're definitely a lot less noticeable like there's it is right there but it's not very noticeable and here is another one but again not very noticeable once we put all that in so not to, you know we have salvaged ourselves and I'm really loving these wing tears that we just did over here and uh, you know I gotta texturize all the way to the tips but I'll do that last because they are so delicate so moving on to our dragon tail see I think in here I'll be able to texturize using our technique and so for this guy, the next thing I'm going to do is simply build up his neck a little bit more. And this is going to be interesting right here. And I'm going to slide him like here. This clearance, of course, can't see anything because of my big old knuckles. This clearance right here for horns and things is going to be challenging. So what I may end up doing is lengthening this wire up here and maybe making a loop or something like a loop to loop and using a stiffer wire using a, a much thicker wire like this guy right here and tying his wing in a loop and doing it that way uh, that way it's not in the way so yes there's probably a little bit more surgery that I have to do and then the idea for his fingers here each finger is going to have a cool horn or a, I guess a, th a nail you know coming out of it and I'm going to hold off on that until I get the rest of this texturized. I'll go ahead and cut it. I can probably make all the nails for all of these except this guy right here. Because this guy holds on to, you know, our, our contraption here. Uh, and so most likely it's just going to be bent and not cook right. So we'll use the air dry for that and use a little bit of clay adhesive if we have to to make everything stay. Like if both of them aren't you know compatible uh, with each other so I guess what I can do now is just smooth out I know I wanted to fix this little back area here just kind of smooth him out a little bit and let me pet him sometimes petting is better makes the dragon happy and get him kind of 
smoothed out here. And there's a piece of uh, foil right in his skin, you know, because he took a tumble backwards. Because sometimes I end up having to lean him back so much that uh, the tail gets crushed or something gets crushed. So I'm going to take the, maybe the big ball? Maybe the big ball. Kind of demarcate a couple of these muscles. And I think I need maybe a bigger scapula here. So what I'm gonna do is simply, I'm gonna create kind of a oval like this. Something like, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Like a teardrop, a teardrop, yeah. And adding it, isn't a scapula kind of like that? You know, in the back? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make it so number one. So just gonna begin to mush around the edges. And some of the muscle I, muscles I added, uh, I thought they were gonna be a good idea. I'm like, yeah, man, these looks like some awesome quads. And then they just weren't positioned right or they didn't look very good. So I ended up just, you can literally take this and shift the clay anywhere you want, you know, just to kind of move that muscle if you don't agree with its look. So I'm just gonna start to blend the edges here. And sometimes rather than rubbing, it's a lot easier to roll and just roll the clay on over. And Dave is saying, engage scapula. Yeah, this is a scapula, guys, right? Yes, because th this is a clavicle up front. This is a, the scapula. So my, my medical knowledge here, I guess it's a dragon. I can say whatever I want it, uh, the, the musculature to be since it's a fantasy creature. Be like, no, this is his gluteus maximus. They have it on their backs, on their shoulders, which this dragon did not want a gluteus maximus, not no way, not no how. He dumped the foil, he tried to dump the clay. So here he has more of a shoulder and I can see that there's still a little bit of uh, blending that needs to happen here. So I am just going to rub it now. Trying to do it sideways for you guys to see what the heck is going on. So I think this camera view worked better. I just need to work sideways, which is better than working backwards or wrapping your hand around the project and trying to work up here and being like, I don't see what I'm doing. So I think that's a nice bony scapula that we have going on. And let me blend him a little more. I'm not going to spend a ton of time blending him because as we saw, like all the warbles and things that I had on this wing like this that looks smooth-ish, you know, but not too smooth, all that is going to go away anyways. So let me fix the wing here. And one of the things I like with this thick clay is that it doesn't crack. You know, you can kind of move it around and it's not too bad. So yes, it, it from pressing on it and all this kind of stuff, it does tend to kind of hurt a little bit, get droopy. But that's our nice little scapula bone or shoulder, shoulder blade bone. And there we go. That kind of, I think, adds to the contortion. You can almost feel your back, you know, going like this because he just landed and he's slipping. So he grabbed, you know, the, the tower with one arm and he's like, whoa, it's almost like he overshot and he's like trying to, you know, not allow himself to ricochet off the castle. So, you know, I kind of like the accidental contortion that we got there just by adding teardrops, ovals, balls, and uh, worms. No, pretzels cookies and pretzels and that's pretty much how how we've done it and I'm just gonna um, accentuate the indentation here a little bit oh no I messed it up and this is where like it starts getting to the point where like you know what back away just leave well enough alone because once we add that pattern that you know we saw it's going to be pretty easy and so for here I say, because it's such, oops, in a great spot, let's practice a foot. 
you know, we can always tear it off if we don't like it. If it like offends us, I'll just burn this part of the, the stream. <laughs> so that way, uh, it, it never happened. It never happened. All right. So let's see here. Let me move him kind of like that so you guys can see him. And you can see where the wires are coming out. It's kind of like he, he's peeing them out. But I'll drill a hole through our, through our PVC. And the other idea I had was like, man, if I just would have like, you know, connected a top portion here and the bottom portion here, I might have been able to create an access hole for myself where I can access his belly. But that would have required far too much, uh, you know, future planning. Come on, people. That's, that's very not Rachel. We just uh, fly. So uh, Dave is saying that he likes the Rachel cam. He like, thinks this is a great idea. There are just certain projects that there's just no no way to show it. It's, it's just really, really tough. Uh, for the most part, I have learned to do things backwards. Like I can sew with the machine going the wrong way, all that kind of stuff, you know, so people see what's going on, cutting wood and or screwing, you know, with having to wrap myself around the workpiece, no problem. This kind of threw me in for a loop. It was a, a little tough. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, I think his foot is going to be about here. So I'm gonna put that piece of clay there just so I know what's what. And I'm making kind of a thin leg for now because I don't quite know exactly how thick this is going to be. And so let's make, I figured, hey, since I got you guys, might as well finish building this out because I want to finish all the build out before we add texture all at one time. And uh, because you guys saw me adding the texture, I'm going to go ahead and get that done so that way we can work on horns because that's going to take, that's like the whole point of this is the horn. So that's going to take us a while. And so one idea I have, guys, is making all kinds of size horns, right? Uh, and multiples of them. And then baking them in the oven so they're hard. So you can book, 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 book hard horns rather than trying to get them to stick and then you know maybe they'll fall over so that's one idea i had because you can mix and match baked with non-baked that's fine they they will stick so i don't know guys i'm really thinking about doing that and making my life uh, easier or trying to get maybe a different brand, like uh, some of the sculpey makes very very soft clay that we can then mold and it might be just so soft enough to just kind of place rather than something like this although it does stick see if that's a horn it's it's really no problem but i am debating whether or not to pre-bake these horns or not so here i'm trying to make kind of a sharp like maybe like a sharp foot a heel if you will so that's his heel and his foot because i guess it's in this orientation it's gonna be like, it, you know, rather than like this, it's, it's gonna be straight on like this. So here's like, say a, a toenail, you know, just for positioning sake. Actually, that's too big of a leg. I think the toenail has to come here. Yeah, and we bag this, bag this clay here. Yeah, so that'll be like, a toenail right there <laughs> it looks really bad right now <laughs> that's how all this stuff looked it just looked really really bad it looks better now you know it, it can look better but you know this is uh, as far as I'm taking it you can really go nuts with this stuff but at some point and how many claws does a dragon have I'm looking here on my reference sheet and it looks like he's got three three claws so let's try this So he's got the one in the middle, which is this guy right here, and I'm going to join it with this clay. Let's make a, that's one toe. It looks kind of bad. Let's, I'm going to roll and make kind of like a, a tooth looking thing. And make another like 
make a look at teardrop using my finger to kind of make the teardrop section kind of like that almost looks like a horn but kind of add it like that right that's kind of a, a toenail right Yeah, and I'm gonna keep this here because we can tie this, help tie it to the castle, make a big old hole. And I just notice I have to blend the little toenail. All right, and now we need a third one because he's like all, all <laughs> the claw. So same thing, I'm gonna do the same thing and kind of create a teardrop. Shape, make a little point. Like that, and then spank its butt like that. And that makes our teardrop. Almost looks like a, a shark tooth in a way. But that's how I'm gonna make all the horns is something similar to this and i'm i don't know i'm of the mind of baking it and then uh you know just stabbing it inside whoa that is too big he's got one giant fat foot like a club foot <laughs> there we go making it a little bit sharper like a claw and it's gonna get you all right this is gonna be a little bit weird let me see if i have to turn him somewhat like nope all right this is where the the weirdness starts to try and get him I'm just gonna have to get used to working with him like this so this is the foot that's gonna be grabbing on to you know like our hut so I'm gonna really curve these nails to make them look menacing like that. Oh, guys, we got a foot. Now, let's see. Do we add, like, musculature to the foot? I mean, these are pretty skinny. I feel metal back here. Let me see what's going on. I feel the metal. Yep. It's a little bit of metal. Let's cover that up, although it's that's against the hut. Can't really see it. Let me get a little toenail there. And let's add some cool muscles to his shin. Yeah, his shin. All right, now that I saw how the skin texture is gonna work, I'm really not blending all that great. All right, so his foot also needs to be a little bit fatter, you know, create a pad. But let's move to this foot here. And what tool do I wanna use? I don't know. Maybe I can start with um, with this one right here. And let's see, how do I want to do this? Let me just blend here a little bit. <laughs> the muscles are afoot. Yes, they are. They definitely are. All right, here I had kind of created a, a crease. You know, like for the shin bone. Let me bring him closer to you guys. There we go. So I kind of created a, which makes my hands much bigger. Ha ha ha. Like a crease here for the shin bone. And I think I'll just continue with this, with this rubber guy here. Let's see how that works. And here I'm gonna create, actually, with our ball tool, let me find the appropriate size, maybe something like this, this size right here. And I'm gonna create a, um, an ankle. And then, is this one smaller? I'm 
actually going in. In between. Creating kind of a, like a foot or leg line there. Oh, of course, for you guys not to see, but I created this uh, leg line right here. Oh, you guys still can't see. Darn it. I have to create that leg line like this right there. And I am not sure that I can even reach the, the other side. So I'm going to leave that as is for now. But we got an ankle. And I'll create a couple more striations here. And I'm going to blend this guy together. He's looking a little rough. There is no good way to do this without covering the piece. You guys are trying to watch. There we go. It's got a little metal showing but I might be able to roll some clay into it just like that. <laughs> no more metal showing. And we have a little bit of an ankle and I wanna get in here, but I, guys, I want you guys to see as well. So I'm just gonna get in here, get in it. There we go. And I think he needs more build out on his actual foot, like a heel of some sort, or no, a palm, a palm, because that's his heel. So that's his palm. That's my dragon terminology. Let me see if I can turn him a little bit and face you guys up. There you go, my amazing <laughs> Emmy award winning camera work right here. And I'm going to pinch to create more of a, a palm. And I'm going to oop, blend here. So guys, we practice up a foot. I think that's pretty good. That's good of us. We are rocking this clay thing. Well, as much as we can rock it. But... We learned a ton of stuff on how to manipulate this stuff. So here's his claw. And that's going to be going through our, you know, through our uh, hut. So that's looking pretty good. And uh, Dave Bexing, I see Gearhead Diva Battle Scars. Amicus, maybe? Maybe. No, you know what it is? Um, like right there, <laughs> right there. It's actually not the mesh. It is this armature, this dumb armature. And I'll tell you exactly where I got it. I'm going to turn this guy around because this was so annoying. I need to cut it short, but I always think I might need more. And I'll just do, do this for you guys to see. <laughs> this guy right here. This guy right here. Every time I was working on the wings back there, that's what happened. You know, anytime I was working on these wings up here, uh, I just kept hitting this thing like this, see? And it's right in the spot where I hit it all the time. So I should probably bend this up or something. And I was getting so close while working with these wings. Let me do this. The other thing, like, I'm considering wearing safety glasses because, let me... Turn him. Let me aim you guys up. See these spikes? I would get so close working to this piece with my face that when I look down, I'm like, wow, this spike is like an inch from my eye. So yes, maybe safety glasses are in order for clay sculpting. You know, this is like some, some rough clay sculpting here going on. 
But guys, I think this is looking pretty good. And yeah, I am kind of chickening out on you guys about adding the texture on here uh, because I do still have work to do on this wing here. I do want to bring it up in the armpit area, just like a little bit of more of a flare here. And I do want to also bring it up here and maybe connect it to the wing here a little bit more. So you see that I started to build that up. He also has no musculature going on on this arm it just looks like a tube with like a flap you know so I definitely want to fix that whereas if you look here there's definite um, body and then the wing skin you know it's a little bit more defined where it's here is just kind of like eh. and you can see right here uh, where uh, I made a worm and didn't quite blend it well so you know this is a worm this is the butt cheeks were like circles you know they were just uh, round balls so that's all that the musculature is made up of it is just like basic shapes that then you just mash down uh, let me not blind you guys <laughs> all right and because this is in front the camera will automatically like focus in on it right so we got an idea for how we're going to do our wings and I really like the way the wing came out and so I'm going to go ahead and continue spining up these wings in the exact same way that we did and you guys saw me do. I'm going to do the remaining fingers and I'm loving some of those rips so I'm going to repeat those rips on a little bit you know this side of the wing then I'm going to take that and repeat it on the under side of the wing so there's it's just the same techniques over and over again and for the skin I'll do a portion of it and then for this coming Thursday we'll finish texturizing using that technique the rest of the skin I'll also have the head more built out you know so he doesn't look like a salamander and I'm going to upgrade myself from circles and worms or pretzels and teardrops to triangles because I think that's how I'm going to do his face is like you know a triangle top and a triangle bottom and that's going to be his mouth uh, and then we'll work on just getting those a little bit shaped up and try and add some horns to this thing and then he'll be ready for a complete bake and hopefully these little salamander eyes right here will survive you know and they'll glow and I figure worst case scenario is that we're going to end up with just red eyes which is nice too you know it's better than clay eyes that we're painting you know so at least it gives it a little bit of translucency but guys this is looking pretty good I am super proud of ourselves in the meantime uh discord is always open so jump on discord post up your dragon pics there's still time to say hey I like this horny head and I like this tail with horns and spikes you know like a dinosaur so there's still time to kind of get your ideas incorporated into the dragon so the discord link is on the website it is on twitch it is on the youtube video so definitely join us there and i will see you guys next time oh and before i go the spider build that is going to launch september 27th so that's really close to halloween we are going to have to hustle people to get that done so we're going to do some lots of streaming lots of streaming so i'll see you guys and thank you so much for joining me it's because of your support that because we're doing this stuff look at this this is cool we're like checking so many skills off the bucket list that it's super awesome we should have like a master checklist of all the skills we want to learn and just start checking them off checking them off and that's thanks to you guys thank you so much for your support and your ideas i'll catch you later have a great weekend